Uh, well, that's definitely true. The 405 is a, is a great fire break. There's no question about that. It started on the east side, and what it did is it raged up the hillside. It's just really dry brush, and it looks like it started right along the edge of the 405 freeway, and then there's a big hillside there. That hillside has been brushed, as you mentioned, but it's not brushed all the way to the top, and we've had some growth. We had enough rain where we had a lot of growth that's really dry, and it burned right up to the hillside. So the 405 freeway is an issue. Traffic-wise, let me show you something. This is incredible. I want to go to the left and look at where they shut down the 405 North. I thought they might do it at sunset, but I think they were thinking that would be too much, uh, too much of a complication for Westwood. They shut down the 405 all the way down at Olympic. See that? Uh, that's just north of the 10 freeway. That's the closure northbound. Let's come back to the fire real quick, if you would, Kevin. The 405 South is still open. And as you mentioned, the 405 is a, a great fire break. There's no question about that. Hopefully they can leave the 405 South open. I think there'll be some concern. And I think at some point they're going to say, hey, we got to shut down the southbound side as a precaution. Right now they're letting traffic through, but not on the northbound side. But this is the real battle because if you, you remember you were with us yesterday, once a fire gets into a home, it becomes a, a completely different animal in as much as there's a lot more fuel in there. Everything inside that home just starts to take off. You've got natural gas, you've got your furniture, and then the hot embers from that spread to the next home. They get under the eaves and they spread to the next home and then to the next one. When it's a brush fire, you do have a lot of hot embers, but it's just not the same. It, it's, it's much more... Um, It'll catch on fire much quicker if it's the embers from a home. They're heavier. They have the tendency to get under the eaves more and spark another fire. So with a lot of smoke with this blaze, I want to give you some perspective. I haven't heard, and give me a wide shot here, Kevin. I have not heard an acreage number in the last few moments, but I'm assuming it's well over the 50 number that they gave us and probably pushing more towards 100. And that's the extent of it right there. As you look at it on the right side of your screen, a little bit higher to the right is the 405 freeway. And you will be able to see that the southbound side is open. You can see some traffic sifting through on the southbound side. I don't see a closure. I even see right now that Mojo Sepulveda is open, and I'm, I'm certain Sepulveda won't stay open. They'll have to shut that down. But, boy, this is just in such a bad spot. We're fortunate we don't have the winds we had yesterday. We have enough of a wind, though, out of the north to the south that it's really a huge issue. Go back, Kevin, to that home. I think it just opened up. It's off Cassiano Street, and that was the one they made a couple of water drops with the uh, Augusta 109, which were just phenomenal, probably saved the house. Bring up Sky Map. Uh, Philip, yeah, unfortunately, had somebody else talking to me, so I apologize for that. What we've seen is this fire almost double in size since we first got here. It looks like the fire started right off the 405 freeway on the east side, as you mentioned, and they have shut down the 405 freeway northbound completely, letting some traffic through on the southbound side, but of course, it is a traffic nightmare. We've been focusing on Casino Road, or Cassiano Road, I should say, and that point right in there that we're going to push into. LA City Fire got their 109 in here. The Augusta made a couple of drops at night and they were able to save that house but go to the left there a little bit Kevin see that little spot fire right there in between the two homes so push into that house as tight as you can now city fire will try and get as many resources in there as they can there's only one street in and one that street out that's all you've got open up a little bit that to the right back to the right that's the real concern a spot fire like that the fire moved from that point to that point now it's burning uphill towards those homes on Cassiano. 
it's going to be hard to save those. So we have a huge battle on our hands. This fire is in a really tricky spot to fight. It's going to affect the 405 well into the morning, if not into the afternoon. A lot of ramifications here. We don't believe a home has been um, started on fire or has been damaged at this point, but it certainly is, is burning dangerously close right off of Cassiano Road. That's the real area that we're concerned about. One more time, we want to give you that daylight view, and it shows you exactly what we're looking at. It'll show you exactly the homes that are in question. Now, there's the Getty Center. That on the top of your screen, that's not the center itself. That's the road that you take up to the Getty Center. And then if you tilt up, you'll see Getty Center on the top of the hill there. Um, and that's the road to Getty Center. You have to go past Getty to really get into those homes. And it hasn't jumped to the west side yet. That is great news because that's uphill. And that would be a real battle towards North Norman Place and that other street there. So let's come back out to our live shot, and we'll push right back into that home on Cassiano. That's a concern. City Fire is doing everything they can do. But their resources are spread thin. They had a, a lot of aircrafts. Most of them worked overnight on the, uh, the Creek Fire. A lot of guys may not have the rest they need. So they might not have as many aircrafts as they would have if this fire broke out and we didn't have the other fires to contend with. Thank you. Uh, okay, we have to head back and get fuel. Our backup ship is... The other aircraft, the backup is here, we understand. Established communication at all ever. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's correct.
farther away.
Okay, so. Okay. No, I mean, like, right. just. Right. Close. I know. Anything happens, the only thing I'm worried about is the camera. Sticks, cords, all that shit can stay.
back up our car last night. what that is, that flat line, is that a fence, someone's fence line right there above those flames? That's a roof of a house, that's a roof line. I think that's a roof line. You're talking about like straight up, there's a yeah. little bush just flat. to the right. Yeah, that looks like a roof line. And I wouldn't, look at it, because houses are going all along here, so that's a roof line. We almost went up Moraga. Help him with directions. Yeah, what's up? Brian Shaw. Brian. Uh, how far down uh, We came from that direction.
We've been told that there are 125 firefighters here on scene. More are on the way. Um, and we did see a helicopter. In fact, we hear it right now. It's a helicopter making um, air drops, water drops. And that should help. But everyone here, obviously, understandably, is panicked because when you see those flames, it is the scariest thing ever. Who's going to let them gonna back up in that spot, okay? Sure, no problem. You know, we saw a firefighter stage. They were getting ready for structural protection, but nothing like this was going on just yet. And then by the time we got our gear and got out of the truck, we saw the flames engulfed in one of the homes. Now, the good thing is that the neighbors are saying uh, to one home has no one's living here.
don't think you can understand what I'm saying. But right here, one of the pockets that burned down on H Hacienda Road, and we have been told by firefighters that residents have to evacuate Hacienda Road, Moraga, Melinda, Flora, and uh, you have to evacuate. And they ask you to because these flames have obviously consumed this property here, and it is a fast moving fire. More than 60 acres have burned, and fire is raging up the hill. This man right here with the hose is a property owner. A lot of folks are coming in to try to help the, the, you know, the firefighters just with their hoses from this whole displays. It is just moving so quickly. We're dealing with these winds, up to 25 mile per hour winds. Now, as far as we know, that number is going up, but we were told 125 firefighters on the scene and more on the way. We have seen helicopters. Okay. Where 
know the people on the roof? I believe the residents are still there. There's some uh, structure protection in place. This shot has been, it's a little bit of an illusion because of the way this is framed up right now. Uh, the fire is actually one little ridge line down, but if it hops up and comes back up towards that home, they would be in trouble. Now, the city fire has been making some drops on that area right there, which is a hot spot. It's really not as close to that house as you would think. As we pull out a little bit, you get an idea. It's got to come down that ravine and then up that hill. But boy, if it does start to come up that hill, that home will be extremely difficult to try and protect. We want to open up and show you this shot and give you an idea and some perspective how large the fire is. Just open straight up, Kevin, and then pan down to the left. Now, there's the 405 freeway. Once again, northbound, it is closed. Southbound, it is open, but it's a nightmare out of the valley. So Pulvita Boulevard is shut down. Don't think about using that. You can see some of the Linda Floor Drive, that street down on the bottom of your screen. Those homes seem to be okay for the moment, but it's the houses down here off of Cassiano that really are of concern, and right now, for the most part, they're obscured by smoke, so they really have a difficult time. All these little streets, Moraga Drive, I think Christina was down in that area, they are all threatened. There's one way in, one way out, so it's critical that they get out right away. Go to the west side for a moment. Let's go to the west side for a moment. Southwest. No, that is absolutely the case. We don't have the gusty winds that we had, say, yesterday, like we did in the Phillips fire when we were losing home after home after home. What's critical here, though, is that right now, for the most part, this is a brush fire. And because the, the critical part about that is once a home catches on fire, you just have heavier embers, and those get up underneath other homes, up under the eaves, and they start that house on fire. That's critical. So far, from what we can tell, they've stopped it from spreading. What I'm doing right now, spreading to a structure, is crossing right over the top of the fire. There is the 139. You can drop up to 600 gallons, and there's a fantastic drop there. But we're going to go to the right a little bit, or just tilt up, Kevin, and we're going to show you the 405 freeway and where the fire started. It's right along this stretch right there is where it looks like the origin of the fire was. You can see southbound, they're getting by. 405 northbound is closed. And I wanted to come around to this other side and see if we could get a glimpse of what was happening to the 405 side of the freeway, if you will, to the western flank, and see what might be threatened there. There are some structures on the bottom of that area as well, but the fire is burning away from them. Tilt up a little bit, Kevin, and push in. There are some big homes down along this street here, and a big loom up right there. Push into that, and uh, we'll see on Sky Map 7 if it brings it up the street that is on. But you can tell, boy, if that spreads to some of those homes, it is tricky, and uh, ingress and egress is so tough in here. If it flips around to another street, I mean, just pull out a little bit, you can see what happens. There's no way to get out if this fire would loop around further to the south. So they really, those houses on the, on the right side of your screen, I think that's Beltaire. But they, they really seem to be threatened. And push in right there, it looks like even to the south side of Beltaire. Push right into that little loom up there. You go, that dark uh, smoke we're seeing. But this looks extremely dangerous to me that it's surrounding some of these homes and we don't see a whole bunch of structure protection in place for these houses quite yet. All right, the 405 northbound is shut down all the way by Olympic. They may have uh, shut it down around Wilshire Boulevard. It was uh, hard to tell for certain, but way to the south, the 405 north is closed. I think we have that report that the 405 north was open because what they did is they had a, a section of traffic, maybe several thousand cars, that they stopped on the 405, 
and then they finally got them through. So all of a sudden it looked like, hey, traffic is moving through. Uh, it was not. That was just a, a grouping of cars that had stopped, and, and then they ran a, a traffic break further south. They came north. Southbound side of the 405 is open now. It looks like a lane is blocked further north on uh, um, southbound, one lane, a left lane. But you can get through, but it's slow going. I mean, usually the 405 at this location is moving pretty good. Everybody is slowing to look at the helicopters, to look at the smoke, and then Sepulveda Boulevard is shut down, so traffic is being forced onto Sepulveda. I want to come back off to the right, though, and show you those homes that are threatened because that is critical. We could lose a home in there. I think that street was Belterre. It's further to the right. It's way down to the south there, Kevin. If you keep moving and then you push right in there, right in the top of your screen where you see all that smoke and you see fire on both sides. So it looks like Belterre to me. It's a cul-de-sac. I don't see a fire unit in there, but it looks like fire has spread to the brush on the south side. So really critical this area and then off Cassiano, which would be on the east side of the fire. We're looking at the west side and we're looking to the east, but you can see how smoky it is. Fortunately, Blake, I can't uh, uh, press this too much. We just don't have a lot of heavy winds in the area. If we did, we would be losing these homes. I'm pretty sure of that. No, no, it is not, and I'm not sure exactly what that facility is. You know, sometimes on SkyMap 7, we can actually bring up what that is. I'm not sure exactly what that facility is, but I do not believe that it is a school. Yeah, maybe you can read that. We're all the way in. Well, that's, it's, it, it may be Skirball, but it's much further south than what I think Skirball is. The Skirball Center is actually up by Mulholland, where it crosses the 405. So maybe somebody will get us that, or they were able to read that. It could be part of Skirball, but it's away from the actual Skirball Center. Um, but if but if you look to the right, the, those homes in there nestled. Is there a home 133? You can see some of the addresses. Uh, that those addresses right in there. Uh, that's a, a real critical point for those homes. And uh, it, once again, you know, right now the winds are fairly calm. I mean, they really are. It's a godsend that they are. A 40 mile an hour wind in here, and I think we'd lose a lot of homes on that street. I, I believe that's an accurate uh, assessment. You know, you're chasing a fire in a 40 mile an hour wind. You're not always chasing a fire when you are looking at one in, uh, in an area where you don't have those high winds. I mean, the wind driven fire is just is so much uh, more difficult to fight than what we're seeing here. They are getting structure protection in place. LA City is a phenomenal uh, outfit as far as the equipment they have. They're hitting this very hard. You know, we're crossing overhead once again here, Philip, because we're going back to Cassiano. We understand now, I believe, at 1377 Cassiano, we may have a home on fire, and that's really what we were hoping would not happen. But that's why we're sort of giving you a shot that looks a little blurry. Come off SkyMap 7 right now. It's really difficult uh, with the changes when you uh, fly over the top of a fire uh, with what the light does. But Cassiano, we actually go back to SkyMap 7, should be right underneath uh, you see Cassiano Road there, so it's going to be tilt up a little bit. We believe from a report that we just got that there, uh, unfortunately, is a home on fire uh, right in that area. So as we go a little further to the east, we might be able to peek underneath that if we can uh, and then actually see that home that's on fire. The report uh, came in that it was 1377 Cassiano, and it was fully engulfed. Bring up the addresses. Push into the loom up right in there. Copy that, thanks. So we're looking, you can't bring up the addresses. 1377. Look for 1377. I don't see it. 
I know, I, I wanted to see it. Go to the daytime view and bring it up if you could. Where's 13? There it is, 1377. All right, this is great. If we come back to us, I want to talk about that. Let's stay right here and just get off of the daytime view. We know where it's at. If the smoke clears, maybe we'll see something. You know, I don't see any black smoke in there, so I'm, I don't know if this is completely accurate. Oh, uh, yeah, great. Won't they take off full? We come back out to show them that Luma. We come back out, we can bring up the daytime view. And, oh, so he doesn't, okay. We can show a great shot. Get him to come to us. She's off Moraga. Oh, she's on the That might be visible. Oh, uh, is it? No. Uh, Sky Crane come off uh, Stone Canyon right here. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I see him. I know, 139. Is that a Blackhawk? Is that a county ship or is that a... Okay. Come on up to 12 o'clock and pick up that sky crane and watch it drop. Right there in the center of your screen, push in. You can get rid of sky map, I think, for this. It's off to your right, right there. Leo Bellick. Hold on, hold on. Uh, we, we haven't been able to see it uh, exactly yet, Philip. We're going to go back to that because now we have 
uh, two structures. I wanted to watch a sky current drop. They're so impressive. 2,000 gallons. Now, this is the northern edge of the fire that they're hitting right now with this drop, and they can get water off Stone Canyon Reservoir, which is, you know, less than a quarter mile away to the east. So, as far as access, push into the sky crane real quick, if you would. We should see a pretty impressive drop, and it is pretty incredible, and it's a frontline tool to putting these fires out, and this is something that we did not see in the Phillips fire. We did not see nearly the aerial attack that we're going to see today with both County Fire, City Fire, and some of the aircrafts like this uh, uh, helitanker that is uh, the sky crane that is on contract. I want to go back, though, and just come along the entire stretch and show you that area. It looks like we're starting to get a better view of it, but when we bring up our daytime view, there's Cassiano right to the left side of your screen. Bring up Sky Map, if you would, for a moment. And we want to push right into the address. We understand two homes in there at 1377. So push into 1377. And now we'll come off that and we'll go to our shot from Air 7 HD. And it will show us exactly where those homes are. And you can see from time to time we get a little bit of a view. But the smoke is obscuring those homes most of the time. But we do understand now it was in the attic of 1377. And now it has spread to another home. And I mentioned that earlier. Once you get a house that takes off and those homes are so close together, that could be a structure right there. I'm not certain. But that flame you saw just coming through the smoke could actually be that structure because it lines up with what we saw in our daytime view. Uh, once that happens, it's really tough to stop that from spreading to the other homes that are close by. So we're hoping that's not the case, but this certainly has the potential to take out a lot of homes on that street on Cassiano. I know. See if we can find that house. Oh, there you go, push in. Hold on, hold on, JJ, please hold on. I'm sorry, Philip, uh, we had somebody talking over you in the booth. Could you say again, please? Yeah, it's really quick. I would imagine from one drop to the next, maybe five minutes or even less, it is just a hop, skip, and a jump over to Stone Canyon Reservoir, and then right back over. And there is a lot of equipment on this. The Sky Crane, I've seen a, a County Fire Skyhawk. we got a couple of 139s, it looks like, from the city. Uh, that's the Augusta, the 412s. They're all making drops. I wouldn't be surprised if we have six or seven aircrafts on this fire uh, that's, you know, a, probably about 100 acres. You know, we keep looking for that home that may be on fire, and as soon as I'm done with this report, I think the booth had some more information for me on that. A lot of times what we'll see through the white smoke is thick black smoke once a home is fully engulfed. So fire crews are there. They're there with structure protection. They got down onto Cassiano very quickly knowing the fire was heading in that direction. It wouldn't be a surprise if a fire did start in a home. They were able to knock it down before it destroyed that home. It really engulfed it and really caused problems for some of the other homes. But go to the left, Kevin, and push in once again. And what happens is with the smoke, from time to time, we start to see that area. Push right into those homes there, uh, to the left or right in there, I believe. Uh, you can see the smoke moves through. That's the area that we're concerned about. And there's some, yeah, that looked like black smoke. It's actually a tree. Uh, from time to time, we'll get a glimpse of it through the smoke. We haven't really seen it take off, so that is good news. JJ, go ahead.
All right. Can you tilt up and check the 405 at the 101 real quick? Push in. 101 to the right. See if it's pushing. I just heard that. I'm double checking it. Come back out to the fire, please. Just loom up right off to our left. Keep going, keep going. Further left, I believe. Right in there. Right there. Sorry. Is that right up to that home? Is that what I'm seeing on SkyMap? Is this accurate as to what we're shooting? Is this the location or not? It's right next to that house then. Oh boy, yeah, thanks. They don't have these fires in New York. One home. All right. Go ahead and tilt up because that's such a crappy shot. Go to the northern edge of the fire. There's, um, they've been making some drops there. Give me the name of that uh, that street up there. What does it say on SkyMap? Uh, 
Uh, it's really close to homes, unfortunately. Now, these homes, uh, this is the East Sepulveda Fire Road. That's the Mountain Gate area. Those homes appear to me to be fine because the fire, you can see the wind is blowing it to the south. We want to come down the line. What happens is the picture gets pretty blown out this time of the morning, just the way the sun shines on the smoke. It's difficult to really give you a great picture, so we apologize for that a bit. But it's burning through this canyon, and as we continue to the south, we understand now from multiple reports that one house is fully engulfed, uh, or at least uh, partially on fire, 1377, and now another home next to that is on fire, and it's really interesting if we bring up, if you go to the right just a little bit, Kevin, and then bring up the daytime view if we can, that's right where the home is, it's right on the right side of your screen, that's Cassiano, and at the end of Cassiano, are the homes that are in danger right now. You can see Moraga Drive on the bottom there. Those homes right down in that area are also threatened. They have to evacuate immediately. Uh, we'll come back out now to the live shot, and it lays down where that is, and it's difficult for us to get low enough to see in uh, underneath the smoke because we'd interfere with the fire department, but they have a lot of resources on this. They're hitting it very hard. And just a note about the traffic. Uh, it looks like, and I, I was surprised it didn't happen earlier, to be honest with you. When I first got overhead, I said, they're going to shut it down in both directions. It just seems like what they would do as a precaution. And now they're going to do that. So the ripple effect, the, the PCH through Malibu is going to be a mess. The Ventura Freeway is going to be a nightmare. We've got that closure up on the 210. That puts added pressure on the 134. Now the 5 Freeway is going to have to take some of that flow. And you can expect all of the freeways to just have additional hours in some cases, depending on how far you drive this, to get places. It is going to be a struggle. It is going to affect hundreds of thousands of people as far as their commute is concerned. Uh, we hope right down in there that we're not losing a home, but we continue to get these reports that at least one, possibly two homes are on fire. Uh -huh. They definitely are. Yeah, we can't get low enough to see underneath there because we're, we're at an altitude so that we don't interfere with their operation. But they are getting uh, down in there. Now, they have strategies that, you know, I don't always understand, but they are the best strategies, trust me. Right now, they're doing a lot of water drops on the northern edge. Now, where I see a sky crane coming into view, we may show you that in just a moment, and that may be going down towards Cassiano Road, but it looks like most of the water drops have been made on the northern edge there, and you wonder why. Well, it's probably because they're worried about that going down the canyon and then back up towards homes on the other side of that ridge because we know how fast the fire spreads once it's going uphill. Now, that's amazing what that aircraft can do. I mean, it's a phenomenal aircraft. The drop 2,000 gallons, I mean, just do the math, right? I think it's actually 2,500 gallons, which may be around 30,000 pounds. That is incredible, and that can do a lot of damage to the fire. But to answer your question, Yes, they are getting the helicopters underneath the smoke and making the drops where they need to. But in some situations, depending on how thick the smoke is, they may not be able to drop right on the house they want to. I mean, that does happen from time to time. Not all of the aircrafts are equipped with the ability to fly zero zero through the smoke to make a drop. Only the ones with night vision, and I'm not sure exactly how they work that during daylight hours. So, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, issues as far as the drop is concerned. We'll go back to the left and open up because it gives you an idea how big this is. And certainly I think we're approaching at least 100 acres, uh, much more than the 50 acres that were mentioned. But it's that area off to the left on Moraga and Cassiano that gives us most of the concern. Uh, we're going to bring up SkyMap 7 and show you that area. Uh, not that go to, there's a daytime view, so we can push into that, but there's just SkyMap with the 405. There's our 1037 Cassiano Road, and that's one of the homes that appears to be threatened. It was actually 1077, was the, or 1377 was the home in question, and that's off to the right. So we'll bring up the daytime view, which is just incredible, the technology. That's the area. So we believe all those people got out. You know, there was plenty of notice to get out, a lot of smoke. The fire department, the police department, they got in here. They told people to leave. But those homes right there, and we'll come back out to our Sky 7, uh, excuse me, Air 7 live shot. Those homes right there, we can't really see them, 
but they're in jeopardy, and if our reports are accurate, at least one, possibly two, have already been uh, sparked and started on fire. Hold on. Yeah, but you're absolutely right, and I believe that's the case, and one of the reasons I believe that's the case is when we see a, a home fully engulfed, we see thick black smoke, and we're not seeing that come up through the white smoke, which makes me believe more than likely they had a fire start in the attic, uh, the units were there for structure protection, they got on it very quickly, and they saved the home. That would be my guess at this point, at speculation, it's hard to tell for sure, you know, we're looking to the smoke, but one of the big differences that we have going on, there's two actual huge differences what we have going on right here and what happened in the Thomas fire. Number one is the Thomas fire was so big, there were so many exposures. I mean, there were exposures everywhere from Santa Paula, a 14 mile stretch all the way down to Ventura. So that means resources couldn't be focused into one pinpoint area. And the biggest factor is the winds. The winds for us are just a breeze. I mean, 10, 15 miles an hour out of the north and steady that's fantastic. It's those swirling winds. It's those gusty winds, all of a sudden up to 40, 50 miles an hour, and winds that change directions. Now, that's a game changer as far as the battle is concerned. So they know which direction this fire is headed. We are right now optimistic, I would say, cautiously, that we have not lost any homes, even though there's been some scanner reports that a couple of homes have started on fire. And the conditions here are somewhat favorable, considering that we have so many resources in this area. <clears throat> oh. Well, I think they will. I think they will use the super scoopers. They will be able to help a little bit. They're certainly not nearly as effective as the helicopters are. And when the super scooper comes in and makes a drop, they will move the helicopters out. As far as a tanker, I don't believe they're going to bring in a huge tanker and make a FOS check drop, uh, which is a retardant drop, on this fire. I mean, if it really took off and we really had some growth, say, out into the mountains towards the west, Possibly. I don't see that on this fire. But to answer your question, I think the super scoopers will be able to have some effect on this fire. And with the fact that the winds have died down, I, I do believe that they will use them. I heard you, JJ, say that uh, that house was right above the Jewish Center. Um, do you think we should go to the other side and try and see it from there? We couldn't earlier. 
Let's go across to the other side real quick. Let's go, go across to the other side real quick. We want to try and expedite the cross to the west side and see if we can see anything, and if not, come back. Very good. We'll keep it up. All right, be careful when you talk to me because lots of times you're talking to me if you can and he, uh, Philip's answer, asking me a question. It, it completely interrupts the IFB so I can't hear anything, but that's fine, I understand. We'll see what we can see here in just a moment looking from the west side. <clears throat> Boy, they're taking their time on closing the 405. Still not shut down. Okay, you can see into Cassiano, Cassiano there. Push in. You see it in there? Right in there. Push in. That's it. Okay, that's the, um, when they come back out to us, hopefully we can hold this. That, those are the homes. Bring up the uh, addresses, can you? Okay, great. 1377, that's that one right there. Keep the sky map up. There you go. Try and get as, as steep as you can, steep as you can to try and get that right there. To get rid of the glare. Yeah, Philip, you know, we are just coming around to the other side, and this appears to be the structure. Uh, let's see, that's 1377. You can see on the bottom of your screen on our sky map, that's Cassiano Road. And that's the home that started in the attic, and now you can see it's going to spread from the attic. Just to the right, would you push in? Is that another home there at 1357? It push right in there, if you would, tight. It looks like an outbuilding or another structure of some type, maybe a trailer. Uh, no, that looks like a home to me. And this is what we are really concerned about because there is structure protection there. You see the water from the firefighters. Go back to the left there, if you would. There was another home. That one on the, as at uh, 1377. The roof is starting to be engulfed. A lot of smoke coming off of that roof. That means that entire home is going to go. That will be difficult to save. And then what happens if you are with us earlier, those hot embers and you know, all that furniture in there, everything you have inside a home, those embers seem to travel get up underneath the next home's eaves, and then catch that house on fire. It starts in the attic, and it spreads to the home. So, boy, I tell you, from the other side, we couldn't see this. It is uh, sad to see this once again now in the Sepulveda Pass in the Bel Air area after seeing homes lost up in Ventura. Uh, you know, I covered the fire seasons here since uh, 1985. 93 was horrific, 400 homes in Laguna, 268 homes in Malibu. Uh, but this is reaching... Uh, that type of uh, destructive type year, if you will. I mean, we really are seeing um, uh, just some sad, tragic uh, incidences here with people uh, losing property, uh, their lives are disrupted. There's a water drop I think we might get right in this area. I think we might have a, a helicopter coming in. They will drop on the home from time to time. Uh, there's the ship right there. That is the Augusta 139. Dropped 600 gallons of water. And you can see they can make a pinpoint drop. And you can see it's much easier from this side than from the other side because coming up that slope to the smoke would have made that really tough. Yeah, once a fire breaks through the attic and starts to do that, they'll get off of the roof unless they can ventilate it very quickly. There's too much of this house that's on fire for them to be able to save it. So they're going to go to a defensive stance here. Tilt up a little bit, though. I want to show you something. And you see that street? I mean, it is so difficult to get in here. There's a fire unit there, but you, you park a van or another couple vans in there. You get somebody who comes up in there and tries to get back to their house. 
and the fire crews can't get to these areas. And that's why they, they're telling you, boy, you get out and don't come back in a situation like this because they won't be able to get the resources in here to save the homes. And then it's the domino effect. You lose this house. You start to lose the one next to it because it's so hot. It's so intense. Uh, it's much more intense than, say, a medium brush fire. And then you got these big trees next to the home. So right now it looks to me like that home is a total loss. Go down to the right a little bit, Kevin. There was another structure down there. And you might even be able to tell a little better than I, but that looks like a home to me, not an outbuilding, as we push in off of another street. Um, I think that's below Cassiano. Um, you know, that appears to be another house or some type of outbuilding. And you can tell once they start to take off, they spread to the next. There are fire crews there, but there's an access issue. They're not right on top of it. You know, it, it, to God's sin, once, uh, once again, I've said this several times, we are so fortunate we do not have 30, 40 mile an hour winds because we would lose a lot of houses in here. And that, that's a given if we have those type of winds today. Absolutely. There's a strategy to that, and it wouldn't surprise me depending on where it could go. I don't know if you saw that for just a moment. Go back to the fire, but we're going to bring that in. It's, it's difficult for our cameraman because he can't see it. But the super scooper is here. He just made a low flyby, and I think he's trying to get his bearings. What will happen when the airplanes come in, they'll have to move the helicopters out. You just can't mix the two. Uh, but it looks like, I believe I'm hearing the super scooper is going to come in and make a drop. And it could be in this area. They're not nearly as effective as far as hitting a pinpoint spot as a helicopter, uh, but they do drop a lot of water. I think it was around 1,600 gallons, if I'm not mistaken, and that can really help. But uh, you're right, Philip. I believe that that helicopter came in here and thought, that's a lot of fuel. Uh, we're not going to drop on the house at this point. We're going to try and take out some of the fuel. But that structure there on the right, the bottom right, Kevin, really seems to be taking off. And you can tell they're trying to get water on it, but it's not all that easy. There are some access issues. That's 1367 on our sky map. Uh, it's difficult to tell. We could pull out a little bit and see if that is actually Cassiano. I'm not certain if it is. It's a little below. It is. They're telling me it is Cassiano as well. It's just a little below the main portion of the street. But now we have two homes on fire. Some of the smoke is cleared, and we're really getting an idea, an idea just how devastating this blaze is going to be. <coughs> Um, I'm, I'm assuming they are. Let's look around a little bit. I mean, we can do that with you. There's the street, so let's tilt down to the right. Um, I don't know if I saw someone next to that light pole or not. It's just so smoky in here. Really hard to tell, but I mean, you see those flames on the bottom, and you see that house nestled right next to those flames. You see the fire units. You see a, a vehicle in front of them. You can see how narrow the streets are. So this is just really difficult. I think it was we pull out once again, it, I don't see anybody walking around, Leslie. It looks like, and I'm sure, this fire is so close that I, I don't think anybody's going to look at this and say, I'm not leaving. You know, in some areas, there, like I mentioned earlier, there's four or five streets in and out, and you figure, well, if anything happens, I'll just take off that way. This is not the case. If this jumps around, you could be trapped. I would imagine this area has been evacuated. The police are in here, the fire department's in here, and they're making sure everybody gets out. I think there's another helicopter coming in to make a drop. This is the critical area right now. Uh, should be coming around here in just a moment, and we sh well, should see it fly into frame and make a drop. There's the Jewish Center on the bottom. We talked about that earlier. We didn't know exactly what it was. And there's the aircraft making the drop.
stay on the structure. Kevin, try and keep a shot on the structure if you can. You got me? Kev? Well, go, go to the structure. Bring that, bring the addresses off for a moment. Push in. Push into those homes on fire. Everything's good. Got about an hour of fuel left, a little over. There's a good shot, and yeah, those are residents that are just crazy. Go back to the flame. You see him down there? You see the super scooper coming in? Well, it must have been on the other side. We don't see it on this side. Is that water shooting up from there? Wow. Moving us out. Okay. It's all right. They want us for the west end to 8,000 or just... Are they bringing in tankers? Or... Stay on that home on fire, Kev. Oh, okay, I've got it. No problem, I understand. Uh, JJ? Who, who's, up, whose camera had the uh, super scooper make a drop? I'm assuming that was on the east side. Is that, okay, it wasn't one of ours.
I didn't get. I didn't get much. I didn't get much of the. the but, yeah, because we had to get back here. No, and we got this view. Uh, um, yeah, we got their what, interview. Here comes another helicopter. They're probably going from the reservoir up there. out the air attack. Who is? What? You should hear what Scott Rogers say. Oh, look at this black smoke just start even more now. We're the only ones. Yeah. I'll tell you in a second. Okay. He's, well, he is calling out the air attack guy. <gasps> they're, they push him back to Van Nuys. Oh, Scott? Yeah.
Hey, Kristen, do you copy? Kristen, do you copy? Yeah, I agree with Scott. It's getting worse. It's not getting better. You can see my shot. There's a lot of black smoke and it's moving. Looks like it's in a canyon and getting really big inside of the canyon. Fifty-four schools closed within U.S. LAUSD. Because of this or overall? Yeah, and the other fire too. Okay. Overall. Hey, Kristen. Brandy and I are sharing IFB. Brandy and I are sharing IFB. That's why I'm translating. Okay. She forgot her. Uh, phone cord. You can't use regular IFB. Oh, I've heard it all. I'm a sponge. Where'd he go? I lost him. Whoa. Can they come to you pretty soon? Yeah, they can come to me anytime you want. Just tell me how long you want me to go. How long you want her to go? We can talk about it. Yeah, we can do it. You can do anything you want. Yeah, okay, cool. Go go to what you see and talk about the smoke getting bigger. Bigger and the wind's picking up. I need yeah. that. Oh, you need the whole thing. Yeah, remember? <laughs> I'm like, your ears are my ears today. Wow. Don't tell me dirty little secrets. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, Probably here. Uh, Tell them to give me two minutes or a wait, minute. You know what? One minute. I got sun coming through there. It's kind of tough here. Hmm. Hi. Oh. Yes. Mic check one, two. Mic check three, four. Mic check one, two. Let me know when they're coming close. Okay. Sounds good. Tankers. Where are they coming? No, he says they're calling in four F twos. Picture's hot. making a run that's not what they want. No. I think it's too windy for the super scoopers. Come over this way then. A little bit. Yeah. Wow, it's moving. Yep. It's not moving the area I thought it would because it's Nope. Standing by. Okay. I won't even put you on camera. You want to see me on camera real quick? No, I'd no. rather not. Cause I think I'm going to have some good action here in a second. Is he coming from your left? Yeah. Oh my goodness, Leslie and Philip, this is a fire direction that nobody wants to see. Um, my photographer Brian has zoomed in. 
This fire is making a move up this bank. It was kind of unexpected. We thought the fire would be moving in a different direction. You can see a helicopter in the distance. They're trying to stop that movement. But the winds have really been picking up over the last hour here. We're actually in a backyard of the Waldman family. They were so kind to let us in. They've now been uh, told to get out. They're under mandatory evacuation orders. And when we were back here with them earlier talking to them live, um, the fire seemed to be moving the opposite direction. Uh, but now we see it moving towards us. And unfortunately, oh my goodness, it's moving towards so many more homes. Um, you can see the red flames in the distance, all of that black smoke. And the winds are not ha helping matters with another helicopter drop. They are just trying to stop that and flank that fire from moving towards these homes. We're on Cassiano near Mulholland. Those flames really raging now. And we've been seeing countless water drops from our vantage point. I'd say every two minutes, another chopper is moving in. Uh, there's been about three or four that we, or at least it seems that way, they keep circulating through. We even saw one super scooper drop maybe about 20, 30 minutes ago over this neighborhood, just one massive drop of water to protect these homes. But we have not seen that super scooper since. And it's not known if it's the winds or what the conditions are, but that super scooper has not been in this area. That fire, though, now moving through that canyon dramatically. Uh, this is an area where we did see some firefighters on the ground. Um, I, when I was talking to my photographer, Brian, in the distance, he says he saw them moving. Uh, obviously, they're trying to get around this and stop it. Uh, but it's, it's coming this way. And those evacuation orders are in place for a reason. So if you are, of course, just east of the 405 and you got the alert like the Waldmans did and everyone in this neighborhood, please pay attention to them. I can't tell you how many firefighters I've talked to over the last few days that, that it's just, they've told you if you don't listen to the orders, there's another drop. They have to worry about trying to save you instead of saving homes. So please just follow those orders. The Waldmans are a lovely family, three young kids and a dog.